Massachusetts. It's theCUBE, covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. Hashtag seize the data, I've heard a unique hashtag that HPE has chosen for its big data conference. This is the fourth year of the HPE Big Data Conference, what used to be the Vertica User Conference, Big Data Conference. And uh, theCUBE has been here also four years in a row, so we've seen the, the evolution of the ecosystem. Evan Lin is here, he's a product manager, uh, uh, one of the companies in that ecosystem uh, with visibility measures. Evan, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Great, thanks for having me. So tell us about your Boston-based company. Absolutely, so, um, uh, Visible Measures, we are a content advertising company and we specialize with working with brands and agencies in delivering their video ad content. Um, we also uh, do a lot of measurement services as well and that helps us pair over our media capabilities where we um, do offer a lot of data insights to our clients and helping them optimize their spend and their ad dollars. So we're really interested in this topic given that we do like eight zillion videos a week. Um, so, so tell us more about sort of the, the company, uh, what you guys you know, sell, your value proposition, how you compete in the marketplace. Absolutely, so we do have our own hosted third party uh, digital video and display ad server, as well as a viewability measurement service uh, that operates across multiple different ad formats um, and video players uh, via ad tag integration. Uh, through publishers, web, uh, web, web pages, and video players. Um, so essentially, we do work with these brands and clients um, to deliver, deliver very custom ad, uh, online video ad campaigns um, based off you know, whatever targeting they want, specific uh, ad KPIs, um, and we pair all of the, you know, the, the media that we run with them uh, with a lot of data insights that we're collecting on the side uh, in regards to what some of their competitors are doing, what their space is doing, um, and what the trends in the marketplace are. So uh, how do you target people? Let's say I want to target you know, some particular persona. How does it work? So we actually work with a lot of uh, companies like Nielsen and um, Blue Kai Escalate um, to grab their audience segments uh, and then we sync that to, uh, we basically use, uh, use those data um, management platform, uh, sorry, use those segments and target off of those. So, so when you say grab audience segments, you mean so you, you, you somehow you have a deal with Nielsen, you go into their database and say, okay, give us this many of your users and we can target them? Or? Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay, and then and, and you you f you target them how? Uh, they're on the web somewhere, and then you insert an ad or? Yep. So we actually um, work with uh, tens of thousands of different publishers, and all these publishers have various metadata tags associated with the you know the the stereotypical uh, user right. um, that will visit those sites. Um, so that's what we'll use for targeting. Hmm. Now, how about for individualization? Are, are there ways for you to, to know that it's me that's, that's visiting that page, uh, using cookies or login information? How do you know that? Or is it just sort of a you know, target persona? Um, I definitely more towards our target persona. Yeah. Um, I'll admit um, that specific realm is slightly out of my domain. Mm -hmm. I handle sort of more of the uh, data and analytics insights that we provide to our clients. Well, talk, talk about those then. What, what kind of, of uh, metrics do your customers care most about? Sure, absolutely. So, um, Visible Measures actually started out as a measurement analytics company where we went out and we found branded video content across the web. A few years ago, those properties might have included, you know, Meta, Cafe, Funny or Die, but today, the more recognizable names are Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, of course. Uh, so, what we go out is, essentially, in 2016, you've got a ton of video content spread across lots of big social platforms, smaller properties, and it's really hard for a marketer to get an understanding of how their content is performing um, relative to itself and also relative to its competitors as well. So what we'll go is we'll go out uh, and we'll find all this branded content for not only you know the clients that we work with but for also tens of thousands of, of other brands that we don't work with. Uh, and we'll go look at things like view counts, uh, velocity of growth, uh, social interactions occurring on these placements, um, comments, sentiment analysis, and we'll sort of bundle all that together uh, and present it to our, our customers. How about things like uh, metrics on individual videos? You're collecting that as well? How long the video is, was watched? Yep, so on the stuff that we deliver on our own end, so the stuff that we actively deliver for our media, well, we absolutely uh, collect events like uh, quartile and decile baking data, 
Um, so on any given day, we might be delivering a few million views for our clients, and each one of these views has maybe 10 to 15 different unique events associated with them, whether it's click-through, shares, uh, tweets, um, as I mentioned, the decile or quartile beacon data. Um, for the stuff that we're collecting more passively, so for the stuff that we're not running for our clients, uh, we are still grabbing um, stats like view counts per uh, duration, metadata tags, all that. So uh, give us some free advice. Uh, I'm a marketer, I want to do a video campaign. What, what, what are some of the, the secrets of success? Sure, so part of it is you know, what your goals are. Um, obviously there's a very simple solution of just paying for more views if you're just trying to accrue reach. Um, but what sort of makes us unique at Visible Measures is that we're sitting on seven, to ten, uh, seven years of historical data and seasonal data too. So we can actually go back and if your goal is specifically I want to dominate the uh, it's, let's say it's August, we're in a back to school um, time frame. We can actually go back and look at what was going on in you know, August of 2015, 2014, 2013. Look at which brands were most successful in garnering viewership, garnering social interactions, garnering conversation, looking into what they were doing from a creative appeal, from a creative execution standpoint, how many videos they were promoting, at what frequency. Um, these are all sort of like very uh, qualitative uh, guidelines that we can provide to our clients on top of then running their media through our system and targeting who they want to target, hitting, uh, optimizing for their goals, and et cetera. So, and I know you can, you know, we could parse people, you know, customers' objectives and, and there's all kinds of segmentation you can do there, but I found that it boils down to two things. They want brand amplification or they want leads that convert. Yep. Um, is that fair, first of all? It definitely is fair. <laughs> and, and what's working in those two categories? So what, in terms of amplification, um, something that we're really trying to um, provide to our clients is uh, something we call a share of attention, and that's really, uh, we're trying to go away from looking at, okay, this is what your brand is doing in a vacuum, and really looking at this is what your brand is doing compared to your top competitors, compared to your space. Um, and that's what's important because you can be delivering five million views uh, per campaign and think that's fine, but if your competitors are actually doing 20 million plus, then you're actually getting lost in the noise completely. Um, so what we sort of provide is um, more of a holistic snapshot of that. Um, attribution is always a bit more difficult um, to sort of link uh, you know, individual buying actions with campaigns. Uh, we do uh, partner with um, uh, companies that help us, you know, do uh, brand lift surveys to see whether or not, uh, compared to a control group and a, uh, a group exposed to a video campaign, whether or not a campaign is effective in driving lift, driving um, uh, purchase intent, and stuff like that. And your your focus is on the measurement, not on the conversion or the amplification technique, right? You're yep. there. You, know, you, you, you I would imagine if you can't measure it, you, you can't Im, 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 improve it. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of your your business, right? Yep. Is that correct? That's and correct. And you sell a, a a platform to do this, or it's a it's a it's a it's a service. You do it as a project. How does it work? So, historically, um, all this data that was sort of flowing through our system was sort of just staying within our system. And whenever a customer would reach out or a sales out would have a question, it was uh, definitely managed uh, from a managed service perspective. Um, but uh, over the last year, we have built out a front end um, that sort of queries on demand the various um, reports that we've been providing by hand to our clients. And this might include you know, some of the competitive reports that I've mentioned. Um, so we are developing um, a platform that automates a lot of this work. Mm -hmm. No, and um, what are you doing with Vertica? Or so, autonomy, or, or yeah, Haven? Or absolutely, what? so from the active measurement perspective, so the stuff that we do run, um, we're getting about you know, a couple hundred million new rows of data every day that comes in uh, that are associated with the views that we deliver. From a passive side, uh, we're definitely handling uh, much less daily volume, but we're also handling uh, years worth of historical data from hundreds of millions of videos that we've discovered and tracked uh, associated with brands. And our platform um, does some pretty complex queries and you know, pulling metadata like which celebrities were involved in some of these campaigns, over which dates, over um, which platforms. And you know, uh, we found that Vertica was really the only solution that could handle the scale and the complexity of the, some of the queries we wanted to do at a time that was acceptable for us. Uh, well, there's a big uh, uh, controversy in the publishing field about ad blockers right now. Is, is that an issue for, for your business? Uh, how big a problem is it? Yes, ad blocker is definitely a, um, uh, a 
big elephant in the room when it comes to ad tech. Uh, I will say that we personally have chosen not to um, to tackle that. Uh, we sort of assume so. Um, a lot of our custom ad formats are very uh, user uh, uh, action oriented. So you have to click to hit play, or you have to click to skip, or you have to click to choose um, what video you want to watch or which, which ad you want to watch. Uh, so in our in our um, uh, our philosophy is that if the user has ad block going, they really don't want to watch ads. <laughs> so we're not going to force, like we don't, we actually don't really do too much uh, traditional pre-roll because we don't want to force the user to watch ads when they don't want to. We want them to sort of opt into the experience, opt into the content. And an ad blocker is really just a, a filter for us to say, this person does not want to watch ads. Why? It's, it's basically a wasted impression if we serve it to them. So you, you detect the ad blocker and then don't serve the ads, is that correct? Or, yeah. Or, okay. Yep. And then you said, I, did I hear that right? You don't do like a little pre-roll pre or, or? So while we do technically have traditional pre-roll as one of our products, our core products are all um, based off of user-generated uh, views. So they have to click and buffer the video or they have to um, watch a certain portion of it and then choose to skip the rest of the ad. Um, so it's a very uh, user-driven um, experience. Um, and that sort of fits into our narrative that we're not really trying, we're not just there to take someone's video and throw it in front of another person's video. We're there to really help brands uh, share their stories and their messaging um, uh, you know, across the publishers that we work with. Right, okay, and so you're, you're basically trying to serve content that the users want to see. So the, and a lot of that depends on the, the video itself, yep. right? I mean, the video's got to be something of interest that can't be a big, can't be an ad in and of itself, even though it's sort of veiled as an ad, but it's got to be of value to the consumer, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so we actually do, do, we do get involved at times um, as early into the creative um, uh, development process where we, because we have all these historical insights where we can look into, like I mentioned, the uh, back to school time period, we can actually guide our clients in being, this is the type of creative appeal that really um, does well in terms of guarding viewership and conversation and positive sentiment analysis. Um, so yeah, it definitely is a huge factor in the uh, success of a campaign. Great, all right, we'll have to leave it there. Evan, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Sure. It was really a pleasure meeting you. Great, thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from Boston, right back. Thank <laughs> you.